<laughs> Good morning, VCLO family. This is Brother Dan at the round table, and we're having a fine morning, just some overextended conversation and a, a good belly laugh that's always a great way to start the day <laughs> this morning we've got uh pastor larry pastor fred we've got brother johnny and brother dan myself and we're just going to talk about what god's laying on our hearts today so who's got the opener johnny, <laughs> johnny. Um, yeah we'll pick on you you should have late <laughs> So, uh, yesterday I was a... Uh, oh, he has something. Yeah, I oh, do. Yeah, absolutely. I'll always be prepared. Um, yesterday I was reading uh, <clears throat> Proverbs 16. Yeah, I was reading out of the NIV. And, um, you know, it's funny how you just read through Scripture, you know, numerous times, and then it's that one, it's that mil millionth and fourth time yeah. you just see something. It pops out at you. And... Uh, and in verse 3, well, prior to that, what chapter was that? I'm uh, sorry. Proverbs 16. 16. Mm -hmm. And you said 3. Yeah. But the uh, Proverbs begins with, you know, to humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. NIV, sorry. Verse. Uh, it's verse 3, ultimately. Yeah. It said, All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. In uh, verse 3, it says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. And when I got to verse 3, that word commit, it was like a wall. You know, and I felt like there was an invitation from the Lord right there. Mm. And I was like, okay, I can either continue to read this proper as I've done every other 16th day of the month. <laughs> or I can I, or accept that invitation and see what the Lord has. And so, um, I really, <coughs> that word was just really highlighted to me. It says, com the word commit... And so I had to uh, look up what the Hebrew term was. Here, just give me one second. I think I had it in. I don't think I have the program on this iPad. But ultimately, I can't remember what the Hebrew word was it for. But it says, stubbornly be stubborn in what you commit to the Lord. And, I, and it was encouraging for me because there's many times where... You know, I feel like the Lord speaking on something and like I have permission to pursue after it mm. but but boy it is uh, not a clear it's not a pretty path <laughs> no it's not <laughs> yeah there, there, there's some trip ups there's uh, and I, I begin to like question myself I begin to doubt myself as far as like what what is going on but I was just so encouraged to it because it was you know, I guess prior to that, I asked myself, what, what, did, how did I interpret this verse? You know, just, you know, give it all to, to, to the Lord and he'll work it out, you know? And, and so, but I, I never really incorporated difficulty. Like usually I always thought, oh, if I'm having a difficult time to, to this pursuit, that must be like, God must not be behind it. That I, I'm just working against the will of God. And the, that Hebrew word was just like, no, be stubborn in, in what it is that God is speaking to you in. And, and he'll see it, see it through. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just super encouraging because, you know, personally, like right now, there are some things where it's just, it's, a, <coughs> it's an uphill climb. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's not easy. No. It's not easy. But knowing that, you know, I felt like the, the Lord has been in it, you know, I, I, it, we felt like it was the will of the Lord to go through this path. And so, I don't know. That's, I guess that was my encouragement, and I'm sharing that encouragement this morning. Amen. Yeah. Good. Good word. Yeah. That's really good. Take you back to Tahoe with that uphill climb. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> That kind of reminds me of the uh, parable Jesus spoke about, about the persistent widow. Mm. Uh, when you get persistent with God um, and don't give up, it comes through. Sometimes we give up a little too early. Mm. And, uh, you know, here's a judge who doesn't fear God. 
doesn't give God glory, doesn't care about anything doesn't about God. About, yeah. no spiritual and here's a, a woman that loves God. Yes. And, and she's having some issues. And we all got issues. We all got problems uphill. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, eventually you, you climb that hill, you climb that mountain, and you, you claim your mountain when you get to the top and you see the valley. Yeah. Your struggles were, were harsh. And, and I know I'm talking to somebody out there, you know, you're struggling, you're going through some harsh moments, indecisive uh, decisions, problems perhaps in your home, your marriage. You're contemplating whether to continue to believe God or not. And, and Jesus speaks a parable in the 18th chapter of uh, Luke. Version. And uh, <clears throat> New King James. And he, and he speaks this parable, he, and the word of the Lord in, in the 18th chapter, verse 1 says 18th this. Or, Pardon me? 18th chapter. 18th. 18th. Yeah, Luke. And, and, he, and he starts out this parable and he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Mm. Which verse are you on, bud? Uh, verse one. So when, you know, that's powerful that, that Jesus is speaking this parable. We always ought to pray and don't lose heart. Trust God. Trust is going to pull you through in right. and, and whatever circumstances you may be going through. Amen. There was a certain uh, there, there, was, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard men. Now, I love verse 3. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. Now, the whole, the whole thing about praying is because we're always going to be attacked by an adversary. An adversary is always going to come against us. No matter what you do, when you, when you serve God and you're walking with God and you're, you know, you're preaching the word and you're encouraging people, and the adversary is going to come and discourage you, try to discourage them. Anytime you can. And, and, and try. try to just twist things around. But when you're pers persistent, this widow lady was persistent kept coming back. Mm -hmm. Word of the Lord, if you read all the way up to uh, verse 8, from verse 1, chapter 18 of Luke, to verse 8, you'll see that she was persistent. Now, we're at the round table right here. I love the round table, and we are here to encourage you hearers of the Word. Yes. To build you up and, and to encourage you to... Uh, Pray over whatever you're going through. Be persistent in your prayer and keep coming back to God and don't give up because the, the word of the Lord in that, those verses says that that judge said, hey, this lady is tiring me out. She is not going to give up. And that's how we need to be. We need to be children of God mm -hmm. and out there in the family. You're hearing me. You need to stay consistent, don't give up, and God will come through. Amen. Because that's what he's looking for, the heart. He's looking for the desire for, for us to be faithful and, and obedient and not give up, not lose, not faint. In the words, don't faint. Don't faint. Don't give up. Don't yeah. give up. Yeah. And so if you're out there and you're, I'll put it this way, the church starts at 945-ish. And if you want to come and really get a word from God, I mean, you can get a word from God at, at home, but the Bible says, neglect not the fellowship of thyself. Yeah. Mm. Come, come together sure. and, and praise the Lord and worship. We got awesome worship then. And we, we have a great ministry of prophetic and, and God uses Johnny quite a bit and others. And of course, we've got some great preachers. So if, if you're there and you're deciding should I or should I not go to church I'll tell you what put your DVRs on record and watch those football games later and come to church I encourage you come to church amen amen, amen. amen. Yep. you know it's uh, funny after while I was reading the Proverbs I just kept on hearing James yeah James 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 and it was like you know it was a it was a it was a, it was a moment or a conversation with the Lord where like Holy Spirit was just 
don't don't just it, it was like he wanted me just to, after I got to that verse he wanted to say okay now stop and go to James and um, I mean, it was just a really interesting um, experience and moment with Holy Spirit yesterday morning and you know just to add on top of that um, James 1 verse 2 it says there it says um, consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of, of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance and let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything and um, you know sometimes we just need to persevere yeah. you know it's almost like a lost art nowadays <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we want everything now. <coughs> yeah. yeah we're in the now generation absolutely years. it takes us five minutes to go through in and out with i mean there's that's trials and tribulations right well, that's a good day if you're doing only at five, <laughs> five minutes, minutes. <laughs> in and out wow yeah i've seen those lines <clears throat> yeah but uh no it, it's just if we're not careful we we westernize too much of our activities. We westernize mm. the scriptures. We westernize what God can or should not do because we're so we're so much surrounded by the material things as if to say, well, God, why can't you just get this, get this, do this, do this, and do this? That's good. Westernize the scriptures. That's but so in some countries today, folks are getting up today, they don't even have food for their children. Mm. Nothing. And some are going to get up today and their children are going to, they're not going to live today. Families are mm -hmm. going to die. Homes are going to fall apart because, you know, a large portion of this world is still living below poverty level. So I, I don't know. I've just been thinking about it and have periodically down through my years of service with the Lord that I, I wonder if that isn't why the Lord doesn't back away at times to, to act, activate the pursuit and to make it that much more of a blessing that when we finally find him in that process of where we're at with that need, as we ask him to please connect us with that faith through that process, then at the end of the road, we find God, which is what we really needed to start with. Mm -hmm. Not just another bill paid, mm -hmm. and God does that. Oh, yeah. A relationship that's broken, he puts those together. He does all that. That's right. Yeah. When it's all said and done, the peace of God, when that peace comes, the answer follows. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what we want is we want the answer before the peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But God said, I'll, get, I'll, I'll answer before you even call. So I'm having, you know, I'm looking, and, and, and we, I'm sure we've all seen, and these that we're uh, speaking to today, we've seen God just do great miracles, but God really just, he, he just intimately loves us, and he wants everything to be based upon on the on the relationship and this is where I believe that much of our Western civilization we we cultivate the relationship based on what he gives us or what we you know we seek his hand rather than seeking his face too often and I'm I'm not throwing stones I'm just saying that when you're looking at faith I mean, in fact I was praying that this morning when sister Ann and I were having devotions I said Lord give me faith just to love you faith to know you faith to walk with you faith to trust you faith to serve you Faith to believe you for our family here at Live Oak, yeah, our man. families here. God, give me faith to believe you that mm -hmm. whatever, if it looks impossible, but you it's not. And and at the same time in my prayer, try not to cultivate that with what I see around me. Mm -hmm. And it just gets right down to the pure, raw desire to want to know him more than ever before. Yeah. And yeah. that's the that's all God's asking. So, and you know, talking about committing our works to the Lord, those are works of relationship. Sometimes if we're not careful, we struggle. Some, some do in the body and, and I mean, struggling as we all do, but struggle to commit their thoughts because they have no works. They have no rest because they have no works. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying and I know that it's a challenge and it always is, but to, if I want my faith to grow because in, in Luke chapter 18, Jesus made it clear by his parable, do I, am I going to find anybody that's still pursuing me? Faith, yeah. At the end of the day, will I find faith on earth when I return? He's yeah. going to return. Yeah. 
I just, as praying here last night, uh, before I had the joys of scaring Brother Dan, but uh, I, I, in prayer, I just, the Lord spoke into my heart, I believe this, that he's looking for that remnant, that church inside of a church, that remnant inside of that remnant that is just going to trust him until the last of the days. And I want to be a part of that. And I know that within myself, that's not even a possibility. But I know that through him and through his word. So I want to it just uh, be careful with your praying about, you know, trying to include all your prayer and westernize it by what you see around us. What if we all got up today and we had to get together for prayer for food? Mm. I don't know where this country is leading us, but I've seen God fill my countertops. I've seen God put money in my bank when I had nothing. I mean, we've all got our testimonies and witnesses. But I think that's the iceberg of the faith that he's really asking for. Mm -hmm. And if what I'm reading in scripture, the way we're only going to get on, the way we're going to have a faith to trust him, especially in the difficult days that are coming, they're going to be more difficult. The Bible says evil men shall wax worse and worse. <clears throat> yes, we're going to have to have a faith in him, in him alone. It, it can't be on how much I do, what I do, what I don't do, and so on and so forth. But it's going to be a faith in him, and that's only going to come through trial. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not going to mention no baseball teams, but I watched a couple of teams the other night. One won and one lost. And uh, in the midst of that one team, 25, 26, I think it was 26 times at bat and never got nothing. All God asks us to do is swing the bat. Mm. That's persistence. Just swing the bat. Offer another prayer. Mm -hmm. mm. Offer another prayer. Grab another scripture. That's just learn to live day by day. Yeah. No, not trusting our jobs, not our money, not our talents, not our energies, not our buildings. Just trusting him. And that's scary mm. <laughs> in a Western culture yeah. where we have access to everything. <clears throat> you know, Johnny was reading out of James chapter 1. The 22nd verse of the same chapter, it says... It, it tells us to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. Mm -hmm. You know, do it. You know, get to pray. And do what God tells you to do. Don't just hear it. You can't you can't get nothing done if you just hear it. And do nothing. Yeah. And so. Um, and Jesus said, Pastor. He said that those. He said. A person that hears my words and does them is like the the person that builds their house. Yeah. Wise. They're wise and they build their house on a rock. Mm -hmm. And if anybody knows about construction, sometimes you got to go deep yeah. to yeah. find solid ground, to find solid rock. And uh, those are the ones that will stand in the day. And then sometimes, you know, Paul said this too. He said, having done all to stand, stand. just stand. <laughs> Amen. You know, uh, Sister Ann and I, you know, we have our children uh, three and a half hours from us, and, and we have our grandbabies, and and uh, and we sit like we did every now and then, and we sit, you know, we're thinking, well, we'd like to see this go better. We'd like to see, well, you know, we, we that are parents and grandparents, we, we want to see them do this, want to see them do this, and we want to see them do this, but sometimes as a parent, we just have to say, God, I'm not there to fix it. Mm -hmm. I can't be, I can't do all that. I can't, I can't, no more. Right. I've got to commit that work to you, Lord. Let you establish that thought process in me so that I can continue to pray and pray That's the right. right way. Say, Lord, I got my job. We got our job to do. It's Help here. Me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help yeah. me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Best prayer ever. That, yeah. So, that, I mean, that's, and I think just, I, I think sometimes the Lord just hears those kind of, he, I know he hears those kind of just heartfelt cries. Oh, yeah. Right straight from the heart. Mm -hmm. Just eliminating any level of religion, just simply grabbing it right from the heart and say, God, if you'll take care of that, I would, I would do my best. You know, we would say, Lord, if you'll do this, I'll take care of your work. He said, if you'll take care of my work, I'll do this. <clears throat> That's where faith mm -hmm. comes in. So it's, a, it's not trial and error. It's just trial that produces faith. Because when we trust God in that trial, in that difficult time, and do his word, we're building our houses on the rocks. That's what got Israel in trouble. The first generation, that's why they died in the wilderness. They, they wouldn't believe God for their children. That's and right. if we've ever been challenged about our children or grandchildren in America, it's today. 
It's today. Can we trust God to take care of them with or without vaccinations? Can we trust God to take care of our children and send them to a public school or private? We're being challenged in the body of Christ to set the pace, not by our decisions about whether we do this, this, or this, but rather we choose to trust God. And I want to trust him. And I want that witness to go out. I want somebody to say, how did, how did you get through that? I give him the glory. He did. Hmm. That's faith because I'm building my house on a rock. I'm hearing what God says. And that requires persistence. That requires faith to trust God with that. We're being challenged. The church is being challenged. Yeah. You know, do I attend a service somewhere? Well, you want to build your house on your own intuitions? You want to build your house on the word of God? God didn't say it would be easy. Mm, right. Yeah. Most of the time, it's not. No. About the time I get out of a, a prayer time of just feeling the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, and just like, man, I could, I could take the world for God. I step outside the door, and it's like, bam, I get hit with something. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah, where'd that come from? Well, the enemy's always there. That's evidence that you just might be growing in faith. Mm -hmm. Good. I saw a video a while back where a guy was walk out of the house, like you said, and they smacked him in the back of the head, and he didn't know who did it. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know who did it, but know we, it. we know who's behind us. You know, so, yeah, be persistent. Well, there's someone out there listening, and they're, they're thinking, well, yeah, you know, we, I hear you guys, and I, I have faith. I love the Lord, and I trust him, and I'm committing, and I see the persistence, but nothing's changing. No, something is changing. What's changing is your faith and your love for Jesus. He's taking you deeper than you've ever been before. Right. Now you're not westernizing your relationship with God. Now it's not dependent on what's going on, on the outside. Somebody needs to hear that, Pastor. Yeah. I, yeah. I need to hear yeah. that. That this is, this is, I mean, Ann and I, the congregation that voted us in, voted us in by faith. That's right. Yeah. Just as much faith as it took for Ann and I to pack up that thing and look at my kids and grandkids and say, got to be about the Father's business. Can I get an amen out there? Got to be yeah. about the Father's business. I'm so, just going. <laughs> I'm just going. And yeah. They said come, and yeah. we're here, and we're delighted, and we, and we know. So that's what faith is. Faith is faith without it's works is out. dead. So if you've been taking it to the altar, take it again. Yeah. If you get whacked in the back of the head on the way out, <laughs> when you when you wake up, go <laughs> go back in. <laughs> He's working. He's at work. He's working. He's always working. Dad used to, my dad was, he was, he, he had, a, he had accuracy in his boot. He, he'd always give us a good kick in the rear at times. And I looked at that later in life and said, well, that was just a kickstart. <laughs> <laughs> Helping me get going. Literally. <laughs> I remember one time, this may be hard to believe, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. I was went to a church uh, years ago, I went pastor, and I, I went in there to pray, and Lord told me, he said, I want you there in the morning for prayer. And what he was doing is he'd get me up early in the morning, because shortly after that, I wound up doing some traveling around California, several places, and it helped me to uh, be a little more disciplined about getting up, because most of the pastors of the churches that I preached for worked on secular jobs. So who was I to be laying in there as evangelist, sleeping, while the man of God was getting up going to work? That's how God, that's what he spoke to me about. So I'd get up, and I'd go pray, and and it acclimated me to be able to get up earlier. And so, but I remember one morning, I'd be up at five in the morning and, and uh, I'd go down to church and pray. And I remember praying down there one morning on the front bench and I fell asleep. I was out like a light. <laughs> and I, I'm telling you the folks, I'm telling you the truth. I heard, I heard someone speak, Larry. I mean, it was pretty loud. It was so loud, it knocked me right off. I fell right off onto the floor. <laughs> and the, the scripture came to my mind, could you not tarry yet one hour? Why are you sleeping? <laughs> So I guess I need to pray. So the Lord will give us unction and that kick, kick yeah. in the pants from yeah. time to time yeah. because he just is in love. Listen, I believe he's more encouraged by us getting home safe than we are getting home safe. Yeah. Yeah. He told me one time, he said, I'm more, I'm more willing to, to give than you are to receive. And I said, well, then Lord put me in a place. And he wasn't talking about things. He was talking about more grace. He resists the proud, he gives more grace than home he's talking about. Uh, love and forgiveness and healing and knowing how to deal with offenses and the things that we deal with, he's talking about life. Things that are eternal, things that have eternal value. So 
And I love the fact that the older I get, the more that I have a chance to grow. I really like getting a little older. For you that are a little older than I am out there, this is okay because now you can watch another movie because you don't remember it from last year. <laughs> there you go. And you can enjoy it again. <laughs> God is good, and he's got some good stuff for us today. Amen. Got some good things going on. It's on the move. On the move. Absolutely. So, service is at 945-ish. <laughs> no doubt. And we just pray that you'd all be there. Come see what God is doing. There's great things happening here. And if you can't, watch us, share us. Yep. God's Amen. out there. He's ready. Amen. So let's have a blessed day. We'll yes. see you there. God bless. Amen. Lord bless your family.